Hey everybody! Well, I'm back today with another Halloween tablescape. And this one is a bit more simplified. And I think it's still very charming, very cute, definitely very Halloween-y. So let's get to it. So here on the wall, as you can see, I got rid of that artist palette with uh, my friend's art picture on it because I wanted to incorporate the wreath on the wall this time to give it a different look on the walls. So here you see the big wreath that I've had for like about a couple of years already. And on the opposite side, I have this little welcome sign I've had for years now. I definitely love this little piece because it's so traditional looking and I just love that look. And so you still see my, of course, my Dune um, pictures here. You see Paul there, the chandelier, still up here decked out and pretty and over here to the windows i incorporated a few more picks of flowers in the center that i came across so i thought i would incorporate them in here as well and i think that this looks really really pretty very very bright very cheerful just very nice down here where the picture is you see the little bats the little kitty cat with the jp ornaments and this time I brought another JP piece out, that cute owl candy dish that's holding some of the um, marigold flowers, or should I say the uh, mums. <laughs> and they look really pretty. Now the tablescape is right here, starting in the center with the big, big Halloween cake that I put together a little bit over two years ago now is my black ceramic kitty cat with the hat that I put together. Now I'm going to go by every little detail that I can remember. The hat was an actual little witch's hat gotten from the Dollar Tree, but I took it all apart. The garland that wrapped around the cone of the hat, I took off and I reused it as the topper and as the trim. And the cone part is actually covered with this um, big piece of paint, glitter, a little bit of spackling that I laid out on wax paper and dried. Then I peeled it off and I put it around the cone area with super glue. And then, of course, I varnished it later with uh, varnish just to seal it so that it wouldn't fall apart as time went on. And the cat, of course, was a, a Siamese cat that I spray painted black. And I did that ages ago. And I've had this kitty cat forever. But I thought it was time for me to use it for something. And that's what I used it on, on this giant cake. Next to it is a candy apple. And it was formed from an old apple that I got off of an old wreath that my mother had given me. And then I added to the very bottom of it, as you can tell, the glitter. It's clear glitter to make it look sugared. And colored um, glitter as well. And then, of course, I just uh, went down and sprinkled it with different colors after I painted it black, you know, first, and then I put the orange and white, um, you know, sprinkles on there so that it would cascade down the apple. And then, of course, I added black glitter to it to give it a little contrast. On this little cloche here, it's plastic and it comes from the Dollar Tree. I took a big rose that I had spray painted it black then I went crazy with the glitter and the Mod Podge and I thickly added the sugared look that you see here on the edges of all the petals and then I stuck it to the bottom of the cloche on a little piece of uh, what do you call it um, styrofoam and then the faux candy bits were all done from plaster of Paris and hand painted and then I just put them at the bottom and they are not glued down they're just in there 
And then I added some more of the hat trim, a little garland around the, the base of it, cover the base, sat it on top of this humongous box that I had. It's a very sturdy box. You have to do, you have to use very sturdy boxes in order to make your cakes if you're going to be putting anything heavy on top like I did. And this cake has withstood the test of time for over two years now. So you can really tell that it's a very sturdy box. There's no indents in it whatsoever. And the box itself was covered in um, spackling, white spackling, heavily spackled, uh, speckled because I wanted it to really hold those faux cookie pieces on there that I actually also super glued onto the spackling after it dried. But before I did that, I hand painted orange the whole box. And then to decorate it, I used um, fluid acrylics to just let it drip alongside the edges all the way down and it goes around all the way around. I can't show you the back part, unfortunately but it is fully decorated in the back all the way around even behind the kitty cat and that rose with faux candy pieces and uh, what you see in the front here with all the faux frosting and all the little accent blue and yellow pieces they're also in the back part as well so all these faux candies here were all done by hand or should i say painted by hand after they dried. Now this big um, cupcake here was done in the Day of the Dead um, idea of having a cross sitting on top of the cupcake as if it was a Day of the Dead bread. So the cupcake itself is made from the expandable foam that you buy in the cans. And of course I had made a whole bunch of cupcakes at one time, but I took some and I did them differently for different purposes. And so here's one of the ones that I used here. And then I put glitter, or I mean, no, actually it's red sand and black sand to sprinkle on top to make it look like it was sugar after the cupcake itself was hand painted in black. And it came out adorable. I really am happy with that. On the side here, you can see there's a moon-shaped cookie. On the corners, you see these little medallions of roses. And of course, you know, I told you about the little cookies, which is a uh, witch's hat and some black cats. The black cat might be a little bit hard to see because it kind of blended a little bit with the frosting, <laughs> with the full frosting and in the back, the drips. But all these cookies were done individually and hand painted and hand sprinkled with uh, this iridescent glitter to make them pop. Then, of course, the very bottom of the cake was all trimmed with this cute little star design. And on the sides, you're going to see different little decorations here. Now I figured why not use the egg shape for the Easter from the Easter mold, right? To make Halloween eggs. So I thought that would be creative and different. And I made the pieces, the two halves separately. And then after they dried, I popped them out of the mold and then I hand painted them and sealed them with glitter paint. Then I went ahead with the faux frosting and I incorporated them where I wanted them and made sure that they were secured with the faux frosting so they wouldn't go anywhere and it wouldn't be slipping and sliding. And there's the faux candy. And then the mini cake back there was a piece that I had already made a while back, but I wanted to reuse it. And it was perfect for this um, cake. So I decorated the little mini cake on its own in the corners you see the full candy pieces of course it's sitting on cardboard like the good old days when mom and everybody used to make their own you know little platforms to sit your cakes on 
so it's just cardboard wrapped in aluminum foil like the good old days from what I remember and there's another egg there for the faux candies and over here on this side instead of a miniature cake it's a big cupcake now the cupcake was frosted with plaster of Paris and it was made to look like frosting so it was very loose very um you know it was more um lightly kept so that I could use it like a frosting and then I incorporated some more of the rose uh little coins there and put a little dollop of faux frosting and so there you have it so it came out just adorable and like I said I've had it for over two years and it's withstood the test of time of course whenever I move it because it's heavy I have to be very careful especially of the two edges you know because they do hold a lot of weight and I don't want them to bend so I'm very careful with it but it's been very easy to move around it hasn't bent I just put you know make sure that I secure it with my hands very well so whenever I move it it's not gonna bend and break or do something but it hasn't so it should be fine I think I even sat it the other day on top of a little rounded uh, footstool or like a little stool that I had gotten and it wasn't even big enough you know to hold the whole thing on there but it didn't warp or bend the sides so that surprised me because I expected it to do that from one day to the next with the weight that it carries but it didn't do that so I was happy about that now the idea behind the cake here is that you're supposed to have a slice of cake so I set out my milk glass little plates again and on this side so that you would have your cups to drink your chocolate or whatever it was that you wanted to drink with your cake I put out the two little owl JP um, owl cups that I adore they're so precious I just love them I love owls in general so I just had to use these and they're the only duplicate ones that I have that came from two different sets of cups so I have them together now for the table setting you see the gold uh, utensils on top of the sage green napkins I brought out these uh, light blue glasses to go with the blues of the cake and to go with the walls and the flowers up here and onward with the hydrangeas because I'm always thinking about color and the table cover itself is my and I'll show it again I kept the beautiful linen table cover here and then just had the black um, spider web table cover on top of that and then the table settings here oh I forgot to mention the little kitty cat salt and pepper shakers I showed them to you on the last video they were on the shelf aren't they precious look at the little faces now I got these I want to say from HEB but I think that they're so adorable now back to the table settings I brought out the hot pink or magenta colored placemats sat the pink gold um, chargers brought out my own orange real plates out of the cabinet and then incorporated the cute little green striped bowls here from the spring um, collection that I use but I wanted to bring out the green because there's green in the dining room or should I say not the dining room but the studio and a little bit of green of the witch's hat and the little medallions down there they have green and the little green bow there under the candy apple so I was still trying to keep my colors you know incorporated throughout the the whole table thing and I thought that they looked so cute I think it goes very well let me pull back 
Hopefully I don't trip on something. <laughs> but there's the table. And I think it looks really festive. What do you guys think? And I meant to do this video like a couple of days ago when I decorated the table. I just didn't have time to. But I figured right now would be the right time before I get busy again. It is um, already past 10. So I've got things to do. But let me know what y'all think about the table setting. I think it looks really cute, very fun, very Halloween-y. And of course, it's a table for two, right? So the idea of a playful romance. It's almost like, you know, why not think, you know, childlike or think about your own childhood growing up and how you celebrated Halloween if you did that at your own home. It's kind of like that. It's like having a little mini party for two, you know, where you can let down your guard and be a kid for a while. You know, I think we all need that in our lives to just be, you know, just be a kid. Don't be worried about what people think. Don't be overthinking anything, you know, and I know because I have had that problem myself, but I really don't care what people think. <laughs> I really don't. I do what I like and that's all there is to it. Um, you know, of course, within means, right? You know, within, I, I'm not going to be over here doing anything whatsoever that's going to hurt my partner or hurt anybody that I, you know, end up dating or anything like that. Of course not. But I'm just talking about like having uh, an innocent kind of fun, you know, like with doing things like this once in a while is really nice. It's refreshing. It's different. It lets down your guard to be just that inner child that you always want to be and during these hard times and everything with everybody struggling to make money everybody struggling to get ahead and you know try to fix their problems which sometimes are not fixable right away you need to have an outlet and this is one of my outlets to decorate I love to decorate and I love to write and I love to paint and those three things are very, very up there. And as for the faux making, um, I haven't done anything new. I've just been circulating what I do have through the seasons. But I have thought about making new stuff. It's just that I just put my heart into the other stuff more than the faux making. But it is a fun thing to do. And it is something that if you haven't gotten into doing, that you really should try it. You would be surprised at how fun it is. And all the cool, the cool and crazy creations that you can make. I mean, look at this crazy cake, okay? I did not even expect this cake to be made. And I did forget to mention that the top tier, and it's painted silver and black underneath it, that tier was made from a round styrofoam piece that I bought at Walmart because I wanted to put another tier on top of the cake, right? I didn't want just the square box. And I figured that having a round shape at the top would look cool. But at the same time, I was thinking to myself, you know, if this was a real cake that I was going to be eating or having or sharing or whatever, I would want it to be, you know, where the top tier is not too big because, of course, I was going to put all this stuff on top of it. But I wanted to still have this different look to it on top. So I figured the round styrofoam would be perfect. And I think it just totally set off the top altogether with all the dollops of the faux frosting that I put around it. You know, I wanted to cover the edges at the top, but not fully cover it where you wouldn't be able to see, you know, that it had a base and it was done in black and silver. But see, that was another element that just made the cake pop and the silver kind of goes with the silverish looking trim on that black rose up there. You know, yeah, I think about things like that. <laughs> but I really hope that y'all enjoyed this table setting. And I will definitely come back with another one. And it may not always be uh, about a meal. You know, I may not always have the placemats and the, and the bowls and the plates out. I might just, to, you know, decide to do like tea time, which is something that I was thinking of doing. And I don't have a lot of tea sets or anything like that. They're pretty much put away. But the ones that I do have, I might use. 
and it still incorporate the Halloween theme to them. So yeah. Alrighty. So until next time, guys. I hope everyone is well. I keep y'all in my prayers. Stop by any time. Let me know how you're doing and let me know what you think. So until next time, this is Braceways. Bye-bye.